the train is en route to its destination. Please have patience while we wait for its arrival. You okay, man? Nerves still messing with you? Well, yes, a bit. I'm worried that we're heading to the final showdown without certain details being sorted out. I feel the same. There's still the question of Irina, and this world itself. Not to mention the fact that we're not even sure what exactly it is we're going to fight. I am not sure how much help I will be, but if you'd like, I can share with you what I know. Please be aware that this will involve a degree of speculation, but I should be able to provide some useful information. I too have been conducting investigations into the nature of Salmael's existence. What I have found suggests it is the materialization of an instinct which exists subconsciously in the human heart. So, do you mean it's a sort of malevolent god like Yaldabaoth? Unlike the god of control, who is born from a collective yearning for idleness, Salmael is, how should I put this, a universal instinct that's burdened man since the beginning of time. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to die. Man's innate desire of self-preservation is another way to put it. One might call it a material embodiment of this instinct, born from an ocean of human subconsciousness. So, kind of like the personification of people's consciousness that goes, no, don't hurt me, right? Mm, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad, but... Perhaps it was the passage of time, or perhaps it was a change in the nature of the human soul. In any case, a transformation occurred for the purpose of keeping pain at bay. Whether you consider the battles one fights to assert their convictions, or the will driving them towards their fruition, it seems to think that all potential sources of pain ought to be eradicated. If there is anything that does differentiate it from the God of Control, it is that Salmael believes it is protecting humanity by eliminating individuals with ideologies it deems threatening. So, Salmael thinks it's protecting humanity, huh? Oh, good grief, that's one of the worst types to deal with! And that means it'll do whatever it takes to destroy those it deems likely to cause people pain, correct? The words and actions it has exhibited thus far would seem to suggest so. Ah, oh, crap. Now I'm confused again. So, in simpler terms... Um... Well, this might not be perfectly accurate, but... Salmael's stated goal is to ensure that people don't get hurt or suffer. And in order to accomplish that, it came to the conclusion that any risk taken to fight for something is undesirable. Does that sound about right? Furthermore, given our nature as humans, there will always be those who take a stand to initiate change. And that gives Salmael an endless supply of people to stamp out for having these dangerous ideas. Dangerous ideas? In other words, they possess the will of revolution. A desire to take a stand against authority. So, this time around, Toshiro fits the bill, huh? That would seem to be the case. Very taken by this drawing here. Could I give my opinion on it? Maybe leave that for later. All right, that's enough about that. Now that we have a decent grasp on Salmael, what's next? This place. It's a spiritual world ruled by Salmael. It was built using your cognition, Toshiro. In more succinct terms, this is a metaverse Salmael constructed to break your will. I have come to the conclusion that that is the most accurate way to describe it. That seems like a lot of trouble just to take me out. Under normal circumstances, 
It would have been able to erase your will simply by invading your mind. But a budding power to resist its domination had already taken root inside of you. Power to resist? Oh, I get it. You mean a persona? Precisely. The persona is an armor of rebellion, meant to resist those who would try to exert their influence over others. Like the Phantom Thieves, interfering with those who possess this power is no small task. And you're saying this power of the will had started to take root in me as well? It is quite plausible if there was something to trigger it. Anything happened to you recently that rings a bell? Like, you ever think, I'm having a birth of willpower, baby! That's quite a crude analogy. Oh! So it did help you think of one! It was the end of last year. As I told you before, I'd been undecided on whether to indict my father for his wrongdoings. And it was right around that time when you all hijacked the live TV broadcast. Here I was struggling to stand up to my father while you were boldly proclaiming your beliefs to the entire nation. When I thought about it that way, I felt inspired to show the same courage as you. As for what happened next, well, you already know that part. It is still only a possibility, but a faint seed of power may have taken root within him then. Of course, a persona can be awakened in other ways too. I see. I think I'm starting to understand. Agreed. In other words, with ordinary people, Salmael is able to invade their minds whenever it pleases. But with Toshiro, the subtle emergence of a power to resist prevented it from interfering. These drawings are so, uh, <laughs> unique. I'm kind of at a loss here, but... <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Additionally, Toshiro's son being able to resist Samael's power meant he posed an even greater threat. So it was willing to do whatever it took to snuff him out. And the moment it made the decision to eradicate my will for social change, it created this place. Yes. The metaverse we currently find ourselves in is called the Kingdoms. Salmael must have attempted to purge your will by using the memories which lay dormant in your heart. Well, I never would have guessed there was a war being waged inside my own mind. Even so, your subconscious was putting up a fight against Salmael's invasion from the very beginning. And amidst it all, it's very likely that's when you were born within Toshiro Kasukabe's spirit. Me? Just like Salmael used the individuals from Toshiro's memory as symbols of domination, there was another individual in Toshiro's heart who embodied the spirit of revolution. Mary. With your mind under attack, you subconsciously materialized Aerie and entrusted your hope to her. This hope was the power of your persona, the thing that Salmael was trying to destroy before it fully formed. Hmm. So in effect, this is what you're saying, yes? Samael created the kingdoms to try and quash the potential of Toshiro's power. In response, Toshiro's heart created Arena as a symbol of revolution, and the keeper of his power. So every battle the Rebel Corps fought was ultimately an effort to protect Toshiro's will. Oh, not bad, Fox. <laughs> I can't let you take all the glory, can I? What are you trying to prove to her anyways? Things were looking pretty grim before the Phantom Thieves got here. So I'm not sure if I'd have lasted much longer. You had only a fraction of power, but it was also very faint. It stands to reason that you would be unable to stave off Salmael's invasion on your own. However, no matter how persistently Salmael attacked, it was never able to completely wither out your will. Thus, Hitting the limits of its patience, Salmael opted for a last resort. That is when it must have dragged the real Toshiro Kasukabe into this metaverse. And then it used my fiancé, my father.
father and my imposter. Each one of my traumas trying to corner me. It wasn't able to break Toshiro's heart with Arena defending it, so it went for the throat instead. Ugh, seriously? Using a person's memories to try and break them down emotionally is some real sick stuff. You got that right. For the people. Who's it kidding? But that didn't go according to plan either, did it? No, it did not. Therefore, it would stand to reason that Salmael is also in a difficult position. The fact that it showed itself would seem to indicate the intention to settle things with its own hands. Which means we're in for a head-to-head -head fight, right? Yes, you have the general idea. I know we went through all this relatively quickly, but we will be arriving shortly. I will be happy to answer any more questions to the best of my ability after we arrive. Thank you, Miss Lavenza. To put it plainly, the enemy is yet another nosy god wannabe. It's not going to be an easy fight, but when has that ever stopped the Phantom Thieves? Pardon me. We will be arriving momentarily, everyone. Are all your preparations in order? Hell yeah! Bring it on! I would have liked to enjoy this pleasant train ride a bit longer, but I suppose that we'll have to wait until we clean up this mess. Armor out couldn't be higher. Onwards! No cause for concern, I see. Very well. I will take us right in. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> your step getting off excuse me but is that what you call safe the world did three whole rotations i'm dizzy sorry did i hit a bag or something Ugh. anyhow it looks like we made it to the enemy stronghold do you think samael's waiting up ahead yes but i wouldn't expect a warm reception I would suggest going further only when amply prepared. This is the final battle. Let's get the win and stop this nutcase for good. Yeah, and I'll settle the score with my past once and... <laughs> you don't make it easy to have a cool exit, do you? By the look on your face, I take it there is still something on your mind. I am more than happy to shed some light on your understanding of the situation, if you would like. Of course. So what would you like to discuss first? As I told you before, this is the Velvet Room, but with an altered appearance. The appearance of the Velvet Room will change depending on the visitor's state of mind. But typically, once an appearance has been determined, a second transformation should not be possible. Therefore, I believe this world and Salmael are responsible for the current aberration from the norm. Is this related to what you said before? About the room being unstable? from within a state of limbo. I presume its current appearance is only temporary. It seems safe to assume so. Between the interference of Salmael, the growth of your own heart, and the will of Toshiro Kasukabe, the present appearance is likely the result of these irregularities happening all at once. 
That makes sense. Well, at any rate, having this train has been a major convenience. For now, let's just be grateful for it. Is there anything else you wish to ask me? Salmayal was the entity responsible for creating this world in Toshiro Kasukabe's heart. This much I told you already, correct? What was going on with Marie and all the Legionnaires? How'd they actually come to be? Because they didn't seem like shadows to me. Those who reigned as rulers were created from memories and images. They were idols Salmayel conjured for the purpose of emotionally cornering Toshiro Kasukabe. I believe you have all witnessed an entity being born from an unintentional breakdown of cognition before? You mean from Futaba's palace, right? The cognitive form of her mother. In actuality, they were fragments of Salmael's own existence, with the visual appearances of their real-world selves. So all that time, they were treating Toshiro like their plaything, when they were the actual puppets all along, huh? Wait, does that mean the Legionnaires were this way too? Yes, but unlike their rulers, it seems like Salmael used shadows that were drifting in the subconscious sea. And in order to force those shadows to submit to its will, it absorbed them. The power crystals that appeared when the Legionnaires were defeated were likely remnants of this process. Is there anything else you wish to discuss? Her case is another extremely rare one. A cognitive presence, a persona, a shadow. It may be best to think of her as a being that shares attributes with all of these. Meaning... Toshiro Kasukabe created Irina when his will and the power within his heart were struggling to be heard. She was the embodiment of Toshiro's feelings of hope, revolution, and resistance. When you describe it like that, she sure does sound a lot like a cognitive being. Subconsciously, Toshiro entrusted her with his power, the seed of a persona, figuratively speaking. One could say that while in this state, she was a cognitive being with an inner persona. Typically, personas and shadows are two sides of the same coin. And the entity known as Irina carried the light and darkness of Toshiro's heart. So she was born from cognition, but she's also Toshiro's persona. Which would explain why Irina's still herself even after she awakened to her power. Furthermore, even though this area may have been conquered, a portion of it remains connected to people's hearts. A possibility remains that the events that took place here had a subconscious effect on the real Eri Natsuhara's heart. No. <sighs> but, again, this is all speculation on an exceptional circumstance and exclusive to this specific situation. It would be disingenuous of me to go on about theories I cannot substantiate. Is there anything else you wish to discuss? Thank you very much, Miss Lavenza. I feel like it's all making a lot more sense to me now. Well, if I was able to be of assistance, then I could not ask for anything more. Now then, this is as far as the train can take you. Please proceed on your own from here, and good luck facing Salmayel. Fortunately, despite the change in appearance, the Velvet Room has retained its usual functions. I shall be able to assist you with Persona Fusions and the like whenever necessary. That's a huge help, Miss Lavenza. What would we do without you? Okay, I say we'd better prep for battle before moving out!